Hey everybody, welcome to another uh, tutorial session on VR Funhouse. Uh, we're going to be going through a couple different things today. Uh, thanks to all who joined us last time, and if uh, this is your second time coming in and hanging out, welcome back. Uh, we're going to be doing a uh, couple things today that I wanted to talk about um, specifically from last time. Uh, I want to go over Flex. Flex is the fluid based, uh, the, the position based fluid simulation that we use in VR Funhouse. We use it in a couple different ways. We use it for uh, the cloth sim right at the very beginning of the game. You'll have the, uh, the curtains that open up. Um, we also use it for the fluid and clown painter. Uh, we use it for the basketball nets and the basketball game. And we also use it for those little squishy gooey guys and uh, the wacky wall walkers. So I want to kind of walk you through um, a couple of the parameters of that. I'm not sure if we'll get to all of it today. Uh, we might save the soft body physics for next time um, because I want to spend some time as well to talk about performance, which is obviously uh, pretty important in, in the grand scheme of things when it comes to VR. Um, so uh, making sure that we all understand the performance implications and also show you guys how we did the, the performance tooling for uh for, for VR Funhouse, and so make sure that you are using the right settings that we have set up, kind of go through uh, some of the settings we did set, uh, etc. So, um, I did want to clarify one thing from last time, uh, so I'll go ahead and pull this up. Oops, I missed my little drag bar here. Uh, when we were talking about where you find the gun locations, so I'm going to go ahead and on my levels over here, I'm going to go to the foam gun and I'm going to find my, uh, I'm going to find my base right here, pull up my details tab, which I've conveniently hid apparently, and find this location. Uh, I had a couple questions about, well, which one is which? Um, and I have to, we have to apologize here. Some of this got a little bit messy. Um, we have a couple of variations that we used through testing, and we just didn't get this all cleaned out. So this is, uh, this is our humble developer apology to all of you out there. Um, the way, basically the best way to know which one's the right one that we use is, is doing that method I said. Go to the level, go to the VR base um, settings, uh, go to the gun controller right here, so then the foam gun, it's VR settings foam gun. Go to the controller blueprints up and right, and browse directly to it. That is the safest way to make sure, yes, I have the right gun. Um, I'm, I'm going to be modifying the right thing. So uh, when in doubt, follow the tree from the level down. Uh, Alright, so the next thing, um, we're going to just go ahead and dive right in on flex, because I'm sure we're all super excited to find out about that. Um, again, uh, we're going to be working on, on our riffs today. Um, I think we'll do some room scale stuff next time. Uh, let's talk about uh, what is Flex, where you can find more information on it, um, and uh, what are the, kind of the main components. Uh, we showed you last time, um, you know, go to developer.nvidia.com. Uh, um, you can actually just search in Google for the VR Funhouse mod kit. Uh, it's also up on the Epix Game Watcher, so let me pull that up here. This is probably you're already going to be here to get to the mod kit, so just go ahead and um, click on your learn, learn to uh, mod VR Funhouse, and it's going to be developer of Mediacom backslash VR Funhouse mod kit. Um, you're going to want to get started modding here with this click, and here's going to be all of our tutorials. Uh, again. We have a lot more in-depth tutorials than, than what is on here, specifically when it comes to, to Flex and all the other ones. Uh, if you go to About Gameworks um, VFX, you will see that we have one specifically about the Flex usage in VR Funhouse, but we also have um, a specific Flex in UE4 and a Flex reference doc. So this is going to be the Flex reference doc is going to be much more um, in the nitty gritty of the performance or of the the parameter space and everything but then the flex artist tools page is all about like well how does this work in ue4 so we have talked about particles um, we talk about the different assets such as soft bodies you can see you can do piles of bacon so if you want to do a bacon simulator have fun we can we can do bacon all day long um, 
and it actually is pretty in-depth about how you set up all your assets in UE4, how you set up cloth. So all the information is here. This is how you get to it. It is all directly linked from the uh, initial page here um, about GameWorks VFX and the VR Funhouse mod kit documentation. So um, we've done our best to hopefully have everything here. Uh, if there's anything missing, please let us know. We'll go find it and um, you know make make sure that uh, make sure that uh, you know you get the information you need. Um, so as always, comment on the side, and we'll get you what you need. Okay, back to it. So what I, what I'm gonna what we're gonna first um, talk about is let's just go into the fluid. Uh, so we're gonna open up our Paint gun complete BP. Something squeaking in here. Maybe there's a mouse. Um, we're going to open this up. Uh, on the left hand side, we have a flex paint emitter. Uh, and you'll actually see here it says flex paint 10 12K. Um, I'm going to talk about this a little bit more when it comes to the performance section at the end of the at the end of today's tutorial tutorials though that 10-12k actually stands for something if you are on low medium or high we actually use a different flex emitter um, depending on your your quality setting the 10 uh, we denote as the time that we let a particle live uh, it's 10 seconds 12k is how many particles we allow maximum spawned um, that is a container based setting uh we uh we go ahead and use that um that that is a, a max cap for performance so uh let's go ahead and open up this emitter i'm gonna go ahead and i hit the browse to content browser it's going to bring me to this big old page of flex emitters. We have a lot of different ones in there. Um, so I'm going to open this up. Hopefully things don't get too messy here. All right, so this is basically a cascade for all of you that are not, uh, not familiar. Um, inside of cascade, we do have one limitation when it comes to the flex emitters. They don't... Um, they don't actually simulate in here. So if you want to actually see the simulation, you have to drop it into your level. Do uh, use the simulate command. Um, you can still edit here and simulate in the world if you want to. Um, so you can get some live editing going on. Uh, there's. I, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the individual components of the emitter, and then we'll go ahead and we'll throw the emitter in the map. We'll start playing with some settings and uh, just have a lot of fun there. So uh, this is this is just the, the foam gun emitter. Uh, there's a couple things you're going to need to make a flex emitter. So you're going to click on this particle system up here. I'm going to scroll on down. Didn't have to go too far. Uh, and you'll actually see a section called flex. Um, there's going to be a couple things you're going to need. Uh, we're going to talk about one of, each one of them one at a time. We need the flex container. The container is like the simulation space. That's kind of what you need to think of. So if you're going to actually be um, simulating particles, you need a container. All those individual particles, what they're doing, how they're doing it, that actually sits inside the container. Um, the next thing you're going to need is the phase. Uh, the phase is... Um, what collision group it is in. Uh, we just do auto assign group right now. Uh, that should just set us up right, and we're gonna say it's gonna self collide, say it's a fluid. Um, so this will just kind of put it in the right group. Uh, we need a mass. Um, mass, as, as it is right now, this is kind of a one way collision setup. So the flex will get pushed by rigid bodies, but it can't push rigid bodies back. But, but it does need a mass for if it's interacting with other flex. And then finally, we have the flex fluid surface template. And this is actually going to define like what that fluid surface is going to look at. Um, I'm actually going to take a quick second and make sure I open up the stream here so I can see your guys' questions. I realized I accidentally closed that when I was showing you all the uh, when I was showing you all the mod kit page stuff. All right. So as that loads up. Um, each one of these has already been defined. Uh, we've already got these defined for you, so I can go ahead and click this. Uh, come back to my browser. Uh, I'm not showing you all. Open up the flex container. All right. 
This is a whole up. bunch of particles um, or parameters. So enjoy. Um, it's some uh, it's some serious stuff. You, so uh, we have uh, our come back to my browser. our radius. Um, our max particles are all defined in here. Uh, I'm gonna go through these here in a second, but this is where all this is this is located. So enjoy. Um, we can also open up our flex fluid paint surface. We have our see this is where our green color defined, our smoothing radius, all these uh, various parameters. Um, I'm gonna go through these here in a second. Oops, this is where all this is. Thanks, Exodus 13. I'll jump back a few. Uh, there's always some nice technical difficulties. Um, so, case we'll go through these as we can. All right, let's go ahead and let's set up our space here so that we can actually have some fun. So. I'm going to open this up on the side. We're going to, what I want to have happen here is I want to open up the level. I want to go straight to Clown Painter so I can do my stuff. So we'll go ahead, we'll open this top level persistent blueprint. Showed you guys a little bit of this last week. Um, so we're going to go in through here. This is actually where the level streaming is. We'll see this is the stream stream intro base two i want to instead stream first the foam gun and uh i know that i need to load this light level uh, i have these conveniently placed here for when you're doing this type of stuff so i'll go to the end of the chain i will load my lighting level go ahead and break that Pile. Let's go ahead and play. You can do it. All right, it's always that first time is always fun. Okay, so let me go ahead and you can another fun fact here. You can hit Q on your keyboard anytime. Just kind of reset your default lo view location. Uh, let me get my. Guns up. Okay, now let's start modifying this. Uh, I think what would also be pretty helpful uh, as I debug this and show you this stuff is if I brought in a board, kind of made it easier for you guys to see. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now we've got that level loaded up, so that'll be really helpful to us. Um, Ah, you guys get to see a bug that we occasionally see when you play. These blueprints will occasionally show back up. So I'm just going to take this clown painter board here. Actually, you know what? That's not going to work well. Let's go look for something different. Let's look for a uh, wall. Okay, actually, I'm going to use this wall walker stage. So I'm pull this down. Scroll down a bit. Drop it in the world. Maybe do a little rotation. Now let's see if that looks like something good we can squirt against. There you go. So now we have kind of a nice, uh, nice board to drop against, and so we kind of look at the parameters. So the first thing I want to talk about is let's go ahead and dive in and show you guys how this stuff spawns. Uh, Flex has a special spawner. Um, so I will open that back up. I open up Cascade back up. Pull it over. You'll see here right away we have a spawn flex fluid. So why do we need another spawner? Uh, so the reason here is is that since these particles actually have a radius, so you can imagine just a bunch of bunch of dots. This is all it is, just all over the place, just a bunch of dots um, with with a radius uh, associated with them. Uh, if you, you can imagine if you spawn those overlapping, uh, you're going to have kind of a, a good opportunity for explosion. Um, so we have this special spawn flex fluid. Uh, and what it does is in these dimensions, uh, you can actually set up a distribution, dimension Y, dimension X. And you can imagine just a square spawner uh, with X, Y dimensions. We will say how many. Okay. Uh, what this says right here is two in the X. So I'm going to do two circles this way. Um, and on the Y I have one, so that means I'm only going to do 
I'm, I'm only going to do one row. So right now in this flex fluid spawner, I'm going to spawn two particles. Um, and then we have, of course, the Z component, which is our layer, which is also one. So right now it says uh, I'm going to spawn uh, particles in a two particle space. Um, if we wanted to do a wider emitter, you know, if we wanted to do, do two up, two across, all you do here is just drop in a two. Um, wait for auto saves to stop bothering me. Uh, you can just hit there. Uh, you can actually see, this is one of the parameters you should be able to see a difference. Uh, there you go. You can actually see I'm getting like more and more. That's going to be a whole lot of particles. Um, we'll do two. Uh, that'll be a little bit of a thicker stream coming out here. So you don't have to use the spawn flex fluid. It's just recommended. Um, like I said, it's going to give you a lot more kind of correct behavior as you spawn it. Um, so you don't get any, you know, kind of funkiness uh, or explosions. I, I think as soon as you try, try it, you'll, you'll know what I, you'll know what I mean by this. Um, that's the only real special uh, component of the emitter that you're going to need to know about. It's just the spawn flex fluid. Okay. So uh, I did make a minor change. Let's make sure we see it. Where's my hands? All right, so our, you'll actually see we're, we're, we're kind of dribbling off the end a little bit here. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see that in the stream, but um, we're now putting out roughly twice as many particles per spray. So let's go ahead and let's talk about the surface parameters. Um, that'll be the first thing I want to talk about is how to set up the rest of this. So uh, the material is very simple. Um, this is under required material. It is, uh, I'll pull this up for you. It's very, very simple. It's literally a particle color and then some real quick math to just basically make a circular opacity map. That's it. Um, we, we really basically use uh, this particle parameter just to feed the color data and to make sure it's cut out in a circle. Uh, the, where the other color information is going to come from, the more exciting stuff, is actually down here. Uh, let's click the top of the particle emitter in the flex paint surface. So, hit that. Let's go to our content browser. Uh, and our material inside of here. Like I said, this flex paint surface is actually like all the real parameters, all the real things that make this thing, make this uh, fluid look as it does. So this is the flex dark green paint. Um, we have a couple, we should have a couple more examples if you look around in here uh, for some other colors. Let's open this up. Uh, again, in this regard, fairly simple. Um, we have a specular, we have a roughness, we have a color parameter. So uh, we can go as far as I believe if we just change this color picker. And let's go ahead and save that, make sure it compiles. We should have renamed it since now it is no longer Flex Dark Green Paint. Uh, material compilation for all you familiar with UE4 is never super fast, but uh, now we now have a red. So again, I like to this may see te seem tedious right now, but I just like to make sure everything does what I <laughs> what I said. Did I just go from green to red? There's a bad joke in there. Um, all right, so that, that's basically where all your coloring information is. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you can get fancy with your material if you want. Uh, we, we didn't. We just wanted a green paint, so that's, uh, that's what you got. Uh, let's talk about all these other parameter shapes. I'm going to change this to a different color just to appease myself. Uh, blue on blue is probably a bad idea. Yellow fluid, also probably a bad idea. Now I'm starting to see why we picked green. So we'll recompile that. I'm sure you guys are enjoying my really terrible jokes today, but uh, just got back from vacation. It's tough. Uh, so when we talk about the fluid, fluid flex paint surface parameters, that, there's not a whole lot in here, um, but they're all important. So uh, smoothing is basically exactly what you think. So these are a bunch of circles that we are smoothing out into a flat surface. I'm going to go ahead and take this to zero to really show you what I mean here.
Now, let me get a little closer so you guys can actually uh, see what I mean here. I don't know if you can see this now. I'm going to actually pull this board a little closer to me. There we go. Put about right there. But now there's no smoothing. We actually have this kind of snake skin ripply effect. So this is what I mean by the actual smoothing. That's what this smoothing parameter does. If we come out here, we set this to something like 10. Dive back in. Like I said, the default value we're using in, in VR Funhouse right now is 5. Um, we'll actually get a bit smoother of a surface. Not all those, those balls again. This can be uh, modified by a bunch of other parameters here. We have a max um, samples used. Uh, we, if you actually go to, I believe it is one. So it, luckily all these things have tool tips. So when in doubt, read the tool tips. Um, so we do a, a smoothing of one. I believe this will cancel all the smoothing again. Yeah, so we're back to literally no smoothing at all. If we crank this up to something like 10, try to make this a little higher. Now we have a very smooth surface. Um, all this stuff does have a, it does have a, the, the more radius, the higher the radius, the more samples you use, you will be getting a little bit um, into your performance budget. Oh, look at all that fun fluid. Uh, but this is how we do actually our smoothing parameters. So uh, that, that'll be one way you can kind of change the look and feel of the fluid. Um, there are other parameters here. We have a, a thickness particle scale. Uh, what that kind of does is um, kind of gives, a, makes the fluid kind of round out at the surface. Let me see if you'll be able to see this across. We're kind of, you're kind of looking at the edges. Um, let me see if I can go to a bigger value. We can use this in conjunction with depth particle scale. Depth particle scale actually modifies the rendered version of the particle away from your initial size and your cascade emitter. So you never want to go too high on that. Um, it does kind of weird things if you go way too high. But if we actually use them both in conjunction, uh, hopefully this is coming across that now it kind of, you can actually see along the, the bottom edge here, there's that specular highlight that is lifted up. This actually makes it look like it's a kind of a thicker fluid. It actually looks like the surface kind of rounds on the edge. Um, whereas the version you'll see in VR Funhouse right now, we made that as flat as possible because we wanted it to feel like, uh, well, like a really flat paint. Um, now this is a little bit thicker paint. You actually can see that, like I said, in that specular. Let me use my gun here. My gun, oh, my little running out of fluid. Uh, build it back up. You actually kind of see that on that edge down there. And finally, I'm just going to blow out some values to really show you these things exacerbated. <laughs> this is some really thick fluid. Um, yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is kind of, for a lot of you guys that are VFX artists, this might be what you would do anyways. I always take some values and I just explode them to see what happens. Um, this, this shows you that exploding. Now, why would I not recommend you doing it this way? Uh, the reason I wouldn't recommend you doing it this way to get that super thick value is that our particle radius is still like this big. Um, so our simulated radius is still really small. And if you're going to be going ahead and uh, kind of making a super thick fluid, you should probably be doing that to the container as well. And the container, like I said, is where those physical properties are. So I'm gonna actually, I'm gonna move some of these values back. Uh, to something a bit more reasonable. We're not going to make it thick anymore. We're going to go back to our initial size. Uh, I'm going to open up a container. We're going to go in and have some fun with that. I don't have it open, so it should be down here. So let me walk you through this great adventure that is the Flex Paint container. Uh, the first one I want to talk about is Radius. This is uh, uh, the radius of the particles in the container. I believe this is in Unreal Unit. No, no, it's actually, um, I believe it's in centimeters. 
Uh, I can, I'll have to look at the documentation to confirm that 100%, but I believe it's in centimeters, so this is like a four centimeter particle. It might be less than that. Um, then we have our max particles, this maximum number. These, these are going to be like the super important ones you want to get right right away because they affect how everything else behaves. Uh, the bigger your radius of your particle, you know, the bigger the initial size you're going to want to have of your rendered particle. Um, all this stuff is kind of interconnected. It's going to take a little while to get used to thinking in that space, but you kind of want to get, like I said, your radius right first because everything else falls out from underneath that. Um, so if I did want a much larger particle, so let's let's go ahead and let's go to a, to a radius of 12. Um, a radius of 4 is pretty extreme, honestly. We wanted this really high fidelity fluid for VR. Uh, so with a radius of 4 and 12,000 particles, um, you're going to maybe fill like two or three, you know, gallon jugs of fluid and that's it. Um, if you're going for, for volume uh, with the same amount of particles, you're obviously going to want a much larger radius. So I'm just going to bump that up to 12. Now, I, I haven't changed any of the other parameters, but this should give you a good visual. Um, you can actually see, I didn't spray very much. Those are all that 12 particle radius away from each other. If I wanted my fluid to be this big, now I've got to go in and have some and, and, and adjust my surface parameters or, or my initial sizes on my parameters. So I can do that here. I can um, you know fake that with my particle scale. Pull up my, uh, my hands. Um, and you actually see, you know, we're kind of at this much bigger fluid type situation. We could do this in much re and uh, again, like I said, all this stuff is kind of interconnected. So now my smoothing radius, which is in world space, will need to be. What do we do? We 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 tripled that. So uh, you know, I'm I'm gonna multiply that by five. Um, probably gonna want to increase my samples there. Uh, we're still not there, so I'd have to go even higher. So many particles, they just landed on my face. So, like I said, you're, you're going to have to, if, if you're going for bigger things, you kind of have to start just, everything's got to work together. All these parameters have to work together. It is the it is the slightly difficult part of tuning fluid. Um, that's why we got you at a good spot and handed that off to you. Uh, this will come with more iteration and experiment. So, you know, we can go ahead and 12 was obviously a bit extreme for your average particle system. Let's see what just like 8 looks like. There. 8's a lot closer. I think with just some tuning to the surface parameters we could actually have something something pretty good there without too much trouble. We're going to return this to 4 so I can show you some other fun stuff. And return that, return that, return that. Uh, Simulation, um, again, a lot of this stuff is covered in the documents. I'm not going to go and talk to you about each one of these parameters or we'll be here all day. Uh, but I'll, I'm going to go try to nail the, the, the useful ones. Um, this number of iterations, number of sub-steps, that's kind of how we're going to get our stability. It's also pretty important for performance. More sub-steps, more iterations, more performance uh, this is going to take. Um, we have a gravity setting in here. Uh, when it comes to collision, there's a lot of important collision parameters here. This is about like flex with the world under the collision uh, type. And then we have under fluid, this is where you're probably going to want to spend a lot of time. Um, all of the standard, if you do any fluid dynamics, uh, kind of a lot of the standard fluid simulation properties such as cohesion, viscosity, uh, you know, we have a pressure. Uh, this is all going to kind of sit in here and this is going to give your fluid its real feel. Like how is that thing going to be if you crank up adhesion pretty high, you know, it'll start globbing up um, and you'll get a really good thing there. If you like totally loosen uh, the cohesion and, adhe and adhesion is just going to just like sp flat spray out, just kind of like water. Um, so uh, we can do some fun stuff right away. We can do something like turn off gravity uh, if you want to do some sort of gravity mod. And uh, I'm sorry, but this is, you can actually see uh, the particles spraying up there into space if we take a nice slow shoot. Ah, 
it's all over. Um, you know, this is a good way to kind of, if you want to do some space mods, um, it's a great way to do that. We actually did it a different way in the mod. You'll see online, we actually changed it to a slow-mo, but this is uh, definitely one of the smarter ways to do it. You know, it's, it's just this cool ball up there, a fluid. It just keeps on growing. Um, some other stuff we can do. Uh, there's different ways to do this, but uh, we also could reduce like the maximum velocity if we wanted to. Take that down to 25 from 1,000. We can actually kind of start doing some painting. But flex fluid. I could do this literally all day in VR. Hey, it's a giant amorphous shape. Uh, we can use, we can add the flex collision shapes that, uh, th this gun currently doesn't have a collision shape on it that's enabled with flex. That's why we can't play anything. Um, I'll actually talk about that in the next video when I talk about the wacky wall walker. But we could add one of those, and we could sit here and shape it if we wanted to. Um, let me go ahead and crank that back up. Let's go ahead and give ourselves some gravity. And uh, let's see if there's anything else. We... I think that's that's kind of the big things I wanted to show you guys when it came to actual flex fluid, because um, those are kind of the important things right off the bat. You know, to understand this relationship between the flex container. Like I said, it's all your simulated properties, what they all do, all the good stuff there. Um, the fluid surface, uh, which obviously is incredibly important to actually get in your like, look and feel. Um, the flex material, and also the special parameters that you need inside the flex emitter. So uh, it's going to take some trial and error. Um, normally when I'm kind of trying to look, get a look and feel for, for my adhesion and my surface properties and all that type of stuff, I'll actually set up a test map. I'll put it like four or five emitters and I'll change, change the little things until I get what I want. Um, with any kind of fluid simulation technique, it takes practice. It takes time just, just trying different things, really getting a look, uh, getting a feel for, for how the parameters interact. But, um, We've, we've had some pretty cool internal samples for fluids uh, that I think uh, I think you guys will also discover as you continue to play with it. Um, so the one thing I wanted to talk about, the last thing I want to talk about today was performance and how it is set up in VR Funhouse. Um, as it sits right now, uh, you know, I, 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 I believe I touched on this briefly last, last, uh, last video. I'm going to touch on it again. Because it is just so important uh, to make sure your performance is, is right um, and everything is doing what you need to do. Um, I wanted to just walk you through a little bit more exactly how the performance is done in, in VR Funhouse. Um, we actually have, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open a sub level to show you guys. We're going to open up the foam gun. And. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get quality settings from save. Here we go. So I'm going to walk you through this from, from the beginning. Um, actually, before I do this, one last thing. <laughs> if you are using Flex Fluid and you want to use it for gameplay purposes, I didn't write this down, but I think this is still really important. Uh, we do have a way to count how many particles enter or exit a trigger volume. Um, if you're in the foam gum level, let me uh, stretch that real quick. You actually see all these little, um, these little sound things right here, all over the place. It, we, we're actually they're a blueprint. We call these water impact triggers. Uh, I'm going to just open up one real quick because this is this is super cool. I mean, this is how we count how many how many particles go into the clown's mouth to blow the balloon up. Um, it's when you're like the particles hit the ground and make splash sounds. Um, we actually have a, you know, a trigger box here that as the, uh, we'll go into the splish splash um, component here. Um, you know, as we, the collision component will count the amount of flex particles 
Um, and we actually, in this case, we spawn uh, a volume or a, a splash sound based on how many flex particles have entered a impact trigger. So a trigger volume. So uh, you can use this for all sorts of gameplay stuff. Um, like I said, you can look at the clown mouth blueprint that is. You actually can see it. It's in the clown trigger right here. It's right in his mouth. It's trigger volume again. Um, go ahead, check this stuff out. Uh, this is in this case, it's just. A, I, I believe all this logic is done is actually in the foam gun level. Um, yeah, score under scorekeeping. So check it out. It's it's how you can use flex in a gameplay relevant situation when it comes to the fluid. So we can actually go and, and tell you how many particles. Are, um, are entering and exiting a trigger volume. Okay, now that I got that off my chest, let's go back to the quality setting stuff. So we're doing a couple things. Uh, the foam gun is is a lot of a lot of interesting things happen when it comes to the uh, the quality settings. Um, we're actually going to go through. We're going to get a quality setting from a save file. We attempt to figure out what your quality setting should be when we load the game. Um, we look at your GPU performance that's given to us by Unreal Engine 4, um, and we attempt to uh, say, okay, you should be low, medium, or high, roughly. Um, that is, we're not that it's not always perfectly accurate, so you, you know people can go in there and override their settings to whatever. But it, it basically gives us a zero, one, two value that we put into a save file. Um, we load that save file right here, and then it's time to actually go into the. Uh, to the actual settings routine. So we actually have a um, a couple things here. We actually set the settings, the quality settings here. So what I did was uh, we we get the value. Um, we add, if you're inside the level, you have to write in your string for what level you're in. Right now it's clown painter. Um, I'll show you where this is set. We plug that into our set quality settings. Um, we get that we, we get a bunch of values back from that and then um, we go ahead and set them at that point I'll go through this next uh, and then if you need to do additional per level things uh, we're gonna give you what your selection was zero one or two in this case on zero we use the 10 to 12 K particle system same with uh, medium and if you're on high since we're assuming you have a dedicated GPU um, if you, then we're actually going to give you uh, three times as many, many particles because we're able to simulate that on a separate GPU. We also modify the balloon. Uh, I think that's the main things we do for the cloud panel level. So why is this important that you get your level, if you make a new level, you go ahead and set this, this clown painter string. So if you go into our settings utility we have here, we're doing a lot of we're doing a lot of stuff. Um, we are setting uh, screen percentage, which you should be able to see. Uh, we're setting the multi-res rendering, uh, which is you know the 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 how much of the screen on the outside edges. We actually start reducing the pixel density um, closer and closer. The higher the multi-res things, it gets us a lot of pixel shading performance back. Because uh, especially in these HMDs, this peripheral is just not as well rendered. So why render it at full res? Um, we we modify shadow quality. We modify post process quality. We do all this stuff based on the settings. So getting this right is important. Um, these settings are derived it, in this setting. We're actually getting this from a table, uh, and I'll show you those tables. They are in VR demo assets, settings, high, medium, low. I'm going to open up the medium table and you'll actually see all of our settings. So we'll show the screen percentage we're setting the level to, show the multi-res rendering we're setting it to, the shadow quality post-process. You can add new rows at this point um, and add in your own name, but this is literally where that name is derived from. It looks for the table, it, it reads, oh, I'm in the clown painter level, I'm going to set these screen percentages and these values. Um, if you don't put in this quality setting check into your level, odds are you will um, probably be running under 90. Uh, we do a lot of initial setup in the main level, which I can show you if I can find it. 
uh, well, I, ah, my finger slipped. Um, we actually set, which I'm not seeing it right off the top of the head. I'll have to go searching for it. Um, but we actually do set uh, a couple things right off the bat uh, in the, the persistent level for performance. But then everything else is set on the sub-levels. So if you don't have your sub-level calling a quality setting, it will be using uh, the default highest end quality. Um, so your performance has a good chance of, of probably dropping below low 90 so so make sure you get if you're if you're making a brand new level and you're not just uh, duplicating a previous level make sure you get that quality setting set up right um, so I think that's it for today uh, we're going to next week uh, I believe it's next week we're gonna do our next stream um, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna go into to uh, the wall walker finish up with some flex stuff there we're gonna talk about you know soft body deformation um, interacting with soft bodies you know how, how do we grab things uh, and maybe talk a little bit about cloth, but then more importantly, the second half of the video, I'm going to spend talking about flow. Now flow is what we use in our uh, bow and arrow level, um, which you can see here. So this is what we actually use for our, uh, our flame. Uh, you know what, I might as well just, I, I messed up all the, uh, level streaming logic, so let's see if we can see the fire here in a second. Oh, there it is. There's some fire. This is the lovely difficulty of <laughs> doing this in my own era. So we're going to show you how to make this fire, how to modify this fire, um, how to use it, uh, different colors and all that jazz. So that's going to be the, the predominance of the next episode. Um, sorry, I love fire, so I'm really excited for, for the next episode. So... Uh, this is like real volumetric fire, and it's the coolest thing ever. So I hope you guys are able to join us. Ooh, I can move the fire around. Look at that. Yep, show you how to do that too. Oh, it's so neat. Sorry. See you guys next uh, next stream, and uh, hope you all enjoyed this one. As always, shoot me any comments, questions on the side, and we'll try to take care of them next week. Um, sorry for the minor technical difficulty where I had streamception, apparently. Um, we'll make sure that doesn't happen next time. And uh, we will see you then. Signing off.